Okay, these are some methods that may help you to solve numbers four through seven on the class outline. All of those have to do with solving second degree or, or higher, and there are various methods. Um, number four on that outline, I believe, is just like this one, um, where you're going to be using the square root method, which is particularly useful when the linear term's missing. See how there's no first degree term here, just a second degree and, and constants? So what you can do when um, that's happening is use the square root method by isolating the square term, which means we're going to have to get rid of this negative 5, get it on the other side, as well as the 6. You want to get the square term isolated before you actually take the square root of both sides, which is the main step for the square root method. So I'm going to bring this negative 5 over here, making it a positive 5 leaving you with 6x squared is equal to 150. Then dividing by 6 on both sides so that the squared term is completely by itself, giving you 25. Then once you've isolated the squared term, then you can take the square root of both sides. Since it's second degree, the degree does determine the number of solutions. You're going to need two solutions. Now taking the square root of x squared wipes out the square, leaving you with x. And in order to get the two solutions, you're going to have to report both the positive and the negative solution. Okay, and whether you put a positive 5 or a negative 5 in there, you're going to get the same number so that when you subtract 5, you will get 145, whether you use this number or this number. So these are your two solutions, which you can list like that, or you can list them roster style. Usually they put the smaller one first, which is the negative, and then the larger one, but I don't mind what order you put them in, but my math lab may be picky. I doubt it, though. Okay, as far as the most common method, that would be factoring. The only difficulty with that is that there are several different methods for factoring, and you have to be able to tell by sight, by looking at the equation that you've given and the characteristics of the equation, what kind of factoring method to use. So this is four terms, and grouping is particularly useful when you have four terms. Um, when you're doing any of these factoring methods, you're going to need to zero out the equation, any kind of factoring method. And you're also going to have to do that when you use quadratic formula. That'll be when you can't factor it. So unlike what we did up here when we did the square root method, because um, we were trying to isolate the square term, uh, we did not zero out the problem. So for the square root method, you don't zero it out, but any kind of factoring method, you're going to be doing this. Okay, so zeroing out means you're going to need to move all terms to one side. So you're going to move the 8 positive 18x to the left. That'll make it negative 18x, and you're going to move the negative 9 over to the left side as well. So if we write that a little bit neater, you'll have 2x cubed. The negative x squared was already there. We moved the 18x over to the left, at which point we had negative 18x. We moved the negative 9 over, giving us positive 9, and that allowed us to zero out the right side. Okay, now you're ready for grouping. Grouping, you're grouping two at a time, and each time trying to take out the greatest common factor, which in this case, for the first two terms, the common factor is x squared, you always put one parenthesis next to your greatest common factor that you just took out and use that as a multiplier to get back each of these terms. So x squared multiplied by 2x gives you 2x cubed. x squared minus 1 <coughs> excuse me, gives you negative x squared. Moving to the two back terms, again try to take out a GCF like you did here. What's common to these two terms is 9 or negative 9. You have to choose the right sign so that what you end up with in this parenthesis matches this one. I'm going to take out negative 9 as my second GCF. Because grouping, you're taking out a GCF three times. So I took this one out first. Now I'm taking this one out of the back two terms. Always put a parenthesis next to your GCF 
and use it as a multiplier to get back the two terms you just took it out of. So negative 9 times 2x, so that's matching nicely. This was a positive 2x, so is this. As long as I take a negative 9 out, it wouldn't have worked if I had taken a positive 9 out. Negative 9 times negative 1, making this match this, and also giving us the positive 9 we need. Negative 9 times negative 1 is positive 9. Drop down the equal sign and the 0. Then one more time, taking out your third and final GCF, now you want to look at this expression as two terms. This would be the first term in front of the minus sign. This would be the, the second term in back of the minus sign, this minus sign right here. And what they have in common is 2x minus 1. So this will be your third GCF. This 2x minus 1 is common to this term and this term. And then what goes in this parenthesis, if you're considering this a multiplier, to get back these two terms is the x squared. In other words, this times this gives you that back. And then this times negative 9 gives you that back again. Drop down that equal sign and 0. Okay, so we're done with the factor by grouping steps. But as you see down here, hopefully you notice this, that this can still be factored. This is called the difference, difference sign of squares which has a factoring me method in and of itself. When you're factoring the difference of squares, all you're doing is taking the square root of this first term, and you're taking the square root of this second term, the one in the back. You need two parentheses to do it. Again, take the square root of the front term, which would be x. x times x is x squared. So x is the square root, goes there and there. Take the square root of the back term, which is 3, goes there and there. You put the square roots in both front and back parentheses, and then you alternate the signs when you're um, factoring using the difference of squares factoring method. Okay, then pull down the 2x minus 1. Again, let's go back to reviewing that. Whatever the degree is, highest degree, that's how many solutions you should have. So for this particular problem, we're going to have three solutions. Don't forget to drop down the equal sign and the zero. So now um, what we're going to be using is the zero factor property. And what that property says is that these are all considered factors, these expressions that you see inside the parentheses. The zero factor property says that when two or more factors are multiplied together, resulting in an answer of zero, then either the first factor was zero, or the second one, or the third one, or possibly all of them. And that's what allows you to do this next step. Either this factor was zero, or the middle factor could have been zero, or the third factor was possibly zero. And what that gives you is three small equations, each one having their own solution. If you were to solve this one, you would move the one over here. So you'd have 2x equal to 1. You would divide both sides by 2 giving you x equal to 1 half. Sorry about that, I ran out of room for that solution. For this middle one, you would subtract 3, subtract 3, giving you x equal to negative 3 for your second solution. And here you would move 3 to the right hand side, giving you positive 3 for the third solution. So your three solutions there are negative 3, one half and positive three. I just happened to put them in ascending order, but you know it's fine if you, however you want to list them. Just a common way to list them. Okay, and those are a couple of examples that show the square root method and also factor by grouping. Uh, I believe in your outline. This example for factory factor by grouping is problem number seven on that outline. And this one is actually number four.